Welcome back for another PageKey Solutions tutorial. We are learning how to build our own operating system, and in this tutorial, we'll be running our first bootloader. So, open up your saved VM. The first thing we have to do is install VirtualBox Guest Editions. This way, we can copy and paste to and from the VM and a few other things that are really helpful. So, to start off that process, switch to your root user using the su command, then type the root password that you used when you installed the OS, and now you should be root. Next, we'll update our package listing to make sure that we have all the most up-to-date software. We can do this with apt update and upgrade. Let's install what we need for the guest editions to work. So we'll install GCC, make Perl, build essential, and then the headers for the distribution. Make sure you type this exactly as I have it here. It's a subshell that will substitute in the name of your distribution uh, and the kernel version and all that stuff so that you get the right headers. Once that's complete, go to Devices and insert the VirtualBox Guest Editions uh, ISO image. Then you can just wait a second and we'll use the shell command to run the installer. Just do shell as I have it here. And now, give it a few minutes. It might take a little while to complete. And we can reboot. You may encounter some kind of fatal VM error as I show here. Don't worry about that. Just hit OK. It'll shut down your system and then double click it to boot it back up. Log into your system, and now we can test out to make sure that it works. So, on your host OS on Windows side, uh, type anything into Notepad, select it all, and copy it. Turn on bidirectional clipboard sharing in the menu. Then go into the VM and open a text editor. Now right click anywhere and hit paste. There we go, we pasted something from the Windows side, so we know that it works. You can close that out. Open up a terminal again and switch to root user. Now we'll install everything we need to build our bootloader and emulate an x86 system. For this we'll use Kimu for emulation and NASM or NetWide Assembler for assembly. Let those install and when it's finished, test them both out. Just type NASM and Kimu system i386. As long as both commands are recognized, we should be good to go. Next, copy the wget string that I have in the description and paste it right into your terminal. This will download the source code for our first bootloader. We won't go into the details yet, but let's make sure that it works. As you can see, first.asm should be there. If you want to remove any empty directories, which I prefer, you can do rmdir space star and that will get rid of them. So let's assemble it using nasm-fbin meaning format is binary, and the output will be first.bin. Now let's run it with Kimu system i386 first.bin. There we go, it popped right up. So what's happening here is Kimu is emulating an x86 system, such as the one that you're probably running this VM on. Let's look at the machine code that's making this work. If you use vi to open the file, you'll see a bunch of gibberish, but there is a way to make sense of it. We can pipe this into it, the xxd hex viewer, and now we see more clearly what's going on at every location in this bootloader. So what you're seeing here are raw commands to the processor, the instructions and the data. You could map the instructions to the x86 manual if you really wanted to. Luckily the assembler takes care of most of the details for us. Just know that you can't get very much deeper than this in computer science. Any further and you'll be getting into circuits or something, I don't know. Note the zero padding in here and the signature at the end indicating that it's a bootloader. It doesn't look exactly the same as it does in the source file, and I think this is because x86 uses little endian. I'm still not sure exactly how that code maps. While we're in here, let's change something. I'm going to change that last 7 to, corresponding to the R in Hello World, to 6F, which should be an O. Now we can convert this hex representation back to the original binary format using xxd-r. Last, we will write and quit. This saves the file in Vim. Now that we've modified the executable file, let's run it again in Kimu system i386 and see if anything changed. There it is, hello world. So it worked. One last thing we'll go through right now is how to turn our output file into an ISO image, which will be useful if you wanted to try this on a real system. Once you have a .iso file, you can burn that ISO to a physical disk, and then you can put that disk into any x86 system and boot from that disk and you'll see exactly what we see in Kimu. So that's a really cool way to see this code operating in the real world exactly as if someone were actually to use it. So first we need the gen iso image tool. 
Then we're going to create a floppy disk image. So we're going to echo a bunch of zeros into floppy.image and I can credit this snippet to a Stack Overflow answer. I'll link that in the description. Then we're going to flash our bootloader onto the first 512 bytes of that floppy image. Finally, we'll set up our directory for the ISO and then we'll run the gen ISO image command to create that ISO file. I used PCOS for page key operating system, but it can be whatever. Now, if you don't feel like burning it to a disk right now, which I certainly don't, you can still use Kimu to test this. You just have to use dash CD-ROM and then provide your .iso file that you just created. And as you can see, it works exactly as it would as a bin file. A final tip that I have would be to use that wget command from before and modify it so that instead of getting first.asm, you're getting make file. Now you can just use the make command to automatically assemble and run the program. As a last aside, I will say again, if you haven't already, please try joining the Gitter for this project. Just go to gitter.im slash pagekeysolutions and log in and say something in the community channel. This is a good place to ask questions or maybe if you found something new, share it with everyone else. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next tutorial.